um, professional voice actor, uh, doing the whole, all kinds of different things, commercial work, uh, video games, cartoons, all sorts of, you know, whatever work is available, auditioning for, and um, the scream was uh, another job that came along, and uh, was cast out of a casting agency in San Francisco. They were apparently uh, just looking for someone to uh, play the scene uh, with Drew Barrymore while they were filming it here. That was uh, apparently uh, Ms. Barrymore's idea, marvelously generous of her. Instead of just having a script person feed her the lines or something, she wanted to actually hire an actor to play the scene with her. Mm -hmm. So she gave work to the local uh, talent pool. And I'm one of the many, many people that auditioned for the part, and I got it. No, we didn't really talk too much about it. Um, the main thing I did was just uh, pay attention to the audition script, and it was obvious from the way the scene was written that uh, the person on the phone had to be, well, obviously psychotic, but also attractive enough to to keep her on the phone, to keep playing with her cat and mouse, as it were. So he had to be alluring before turning. Oh, yeah. I love horror movies. There are many I like that uh, that are pretty bone-chilling. Uh, I liked uh, 30 Days of Night, which I thought was really creepy, but then I like uh, John Carpenter's The Thing for just a good gut-wrenching blast of <laughs> gore. Yeah. And, uh, well, The Exorcist, you just can't get, is just one of those things that creeps right into your bones, slowly and surely turns the temperature down in your blood. But then some, really the, the most frightening film I've ever seen was a documentary, Titicut Follies by Frederick Weisman. It was a documentary made in the early 60s about the um, Massachusetts State Prison Facility for uh, the Criminally Insane. And the really horrifying thing about the film is that you can't tell the difference between the doctors or the inmates. Well, I just tried to continue doing my job and uh, <laughs> uh, add a little to, to it when I could. Uh, every actor reacts in their own way, of course. I mean, um, say, in uh, the second one, you know, when I'm when I'm working, I have a monitor there so I can see through the camera's POV what they're doing though they can't see me, of course. So, uh, when I was working with uh, Heather Graham, she looked really, really scared when we were talking. But, you know, she was really upset. But then, in dealing with uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, between the takes, she was going, So... You're Mr. Scary Voice Man, huh? Why do you do that? You like scaring people with your voice? Why do you do that? You like scaring people? Is that something you enjoy? One one thing I've tried to do, I mean, since Ghostface is not an actual person, but really a kind of, he's everyone, is uh, try, trying to make little differences from film to film. So, so that, uh, you know, every, every killer is different. Every movie's a little bit different. And it's a little difficult because I don't know what's going on. 
I don't know who the killer is. I I don't see the whole script, and I have no idea of the ending of the film, who the killers are going to be, killer or killers. Yeah, we uh, that that was uh, that was a real uh, good exchange, a good moment in that one because I threw a little something in there during one of the takes, and he said, "Oh, that's great! Yeah, give me more of that. Let's do that. Let's try some of that." And and uh, so I threw in some more stuff, and some of it made it into the film. The bit about uh, if you ever felt the night slice through. And scraping against the bone beneath that sort of thing. This time around, I got the biggest reaction I've ever gotten from her. On one take, after Wes called cut, she said, He is a sick fuck! And, that, and that's the biggest reaction I've ever gotten from her. But generally, she's very contained and professional. No, I really didn't. It's amazing. It's interesting now, too, because uh, I've seen on some sites, uh, you know, I've gotten reactions from people, uh, letters from people who say, Dear Mr. Jackson, I really like your voice in these movies. It's to really, your what you do is really terrific. Can you tell me where I can get one of those voice boxes you use? Of course, there being no voice box, it's me. And then I, I've read uh, engineers, letters from engineers on uh, in uh, chat rooms saying, and it's all electronics. I can make anybody sound like that. Just come in here and get on the mic and my board, I'll make anybody sound like that. But it's just me. We don't talk about it that much. Um, he He gives you a lot of room. To, to, to work, to move around in, and if he doesn't like what you're doing, he'll he'll give you a, a push in the right, the direction he wants you to go. And if he does like what you're doing, he may leave you alone or say, "Yeah, some more of that." But he he, he gives you a lot of of uh, leeway. Uh, I think because of its its sheer just in sheer simplicity. It's almost like with the mask and the costume, Ghostface is almost like a drawing that could come from any child's nightmare. So it, uh, it really works on a primal level. I mean, Michael Myers looks like a big guy with a mask, same with Jason. Uh, Pretty much ditto with Leatherface, you know. But uh, Ghostface, that's the whole thing about Ghostface is Ghostface could be anybody. You could be standing next to him or her in the grocery store and not know it. Well, I, I liked the bit about uh, cutting through the, the flesh and feeling the knife dragging on the bone beneath. Uh, just the whole opening scene in the first film was just amazing. When you when you see it all put together, and the dialogue is is such an incredible balance. Uh, just like a knife dance or something. Um, yeah, and Drew Barrymore was amazing. I think that's what she wanted, was somebody to really bring that, bring it out of her. You know, that's why she wanted an actor to work with, so that she could get a legitimate gut reaction, which you can't really get when somebody's going... I'm going to gut you like a fish, understand? Yeah, uh-huh. You know, throw you a line like that. Um, I never met her. 
too, which is uh, too bad. I'd like to say thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, when I've when I've done interviews or whatever for other films, I've always asked if they do want me on camera to please blur my face out because it's just it's I don't want to take that away from fans of the films. You know, don't ruin it. Let let them let people have the the fear. Let them, you know, no one can make a monster worse than the monster in their own imaginations. So I just don't want to ruin that for the audience. Ghostface could be anyone. It could even be you. So in a way, there may be something about Ghostface that speaks to something within certain people. You know, um, something they wish they can do, but don't really want to do, if you know what I mean.